welcome back to another video on the What's You and Doing Football channel. Today we've got something a little bit different for you. Today, um, I don't know if you want to call this like a vlog or, or whatever, uh, but we're going to be doing a bit of an outdoor trip and we're going to be taking a small walk through a brief history and a tiny stadium tour of the Dunfermline Athletic Football Club. Dunfermline Athletic Football Club was formed in 1885 and currently play at East End Park, which was the first stadium ever, and they've remained there ever since, and currently play in the Scottish Championship. The club have not had the most successful sort of history, uh, you could say, but have came mightily close to some domestic titles, uh, a few of which being um, finalists in the Scottish Cup more recently in the last 20 years, in 2004. 2007 and being in the League Cup final of 2006, but most notably being semi finalists in the European Cup Winners' Cup all the way back in 67, I believe. The Pars are currently sitting second in the Scottish Championship, uh, not that far behind my team Hearts, and currently being managed by club legend Stevie Crawford. In that same sense, they've been managed by some club legends and legends of Scottish football as well including Jock Steen, uh, Sir Alex Ferguson as well, and most notably Scottish international goalkeeper George Farm, who was also an FA Cup winner as well, that led Dunfermline to the infamous semi-final of the European Cup Winners' Cup back in 68. Back in 2007, after being in the top flight of Scottish football for quite a number of years, Dunfermline were relegated back in 2007 by Celtic and have been stuck in the lower divisions of Scottish football ever since and I'm still yet to return to the top flight. And then unfortunately back in 2013, Dunfermline entered into administration after going through quite a number of financial difficulties but then is now a fans owned club which is called the Pars United. I've taken a bit more interest into the teams sitting in the, the championship with Hearts being there this season. Um, and I think the Kremlin have been more the more um, regular type contenders um, for this season especially. And I did say in the video where I did the top four for the Scottish Championship, Dunfermline were sitting firmly second. And I still think that they will be the more realistic title chasers to Hearts. I think this season, even though I still think Hearts are going to win, the Scottish Championship, I think Dunfermline won't be far behind and will most definitely be in a playoff spot and quite possibly get back into the Premiership this season. If it's not going to be Dundee, it will be Dunfermline. But just based on the few times that I've seen Dunfermline play, they actually look quite a decent squad. I think they've got the players to get out of the Championship, whether or not they would fare well in the Premiership I have no idea and I do think the exact same for Hearts as well I don't necessarily think that they have the squad to really compete in the in the Scottish Premiership I mean I think that they would stay but I don't think they would be challenging for like you know like you know for the European place or even maybe in the top six I'm not too sure but um, especially when they beat Hearts 3-1 at East End Park. They put on a really good performance and like I said beforehand, I have no doubt that they will at some point relatively soon be back in the top flight of Scottish football where I'm sure that all Dunfermline fans will feel that's where they belong. Right, so now we'll do a wee bit more of a brief history as well, but now we're gonna make our way to the stadium of Dunfermline Athletic which is East End Park, and see you there very soon.
so here we are, East End Park, home to Dunfermline Athletic, which has a stadium capacity of just under 11,000. So just to go back to some of the most noticeable players that have played for Dunfermline, it's a pretty impressive list. Just to name a few, you've got David Moyes, Owen Coyle, Sir Alex Ferguson, Nori McAfee, and so much more just to name a few. Just to touch on the Dunfermline crest as well, it was created by an art school teacher here in Dunfermline High School back in 1957 by a man named Colin Dymock. Obviously the DAFC represents Dunfermline Athletic Football Club, but the tower itself is actually the Malcolm Canmore Tower. The tower was actually adopted by the town of Dunfermline and used for the better arms and old seals. I'm not actually sure what that means, but yeah, it was used for that. Probably get a tiny peek in at the pitch as well if my camera reaches up quite fast. Make sure I don't fall. Try and get a decent view of this and Yeah, you can just see some of the pitch, but that's essentially the Dunfermline ground. But yeah, I do hope you have enjoyed this video of the brief history of the Dunfermline Athletic Football Club. If you did like this video as well, please think about subscribing for more future football content and drop the video a like again if you did enjoy the video. And as always, thank you very much again for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye for now.